you can draw this in Procreate. During this Procreate tutorial, we are going to create an isometric illustration, and it's inspired by the game Monument Valley. You don't need any experience with drawing or with Procreate or with the game Monument Valley to be able to follow this Procreate tutorial. I will break everything down into easy steps, and once you have reached the end of the tutorial, you will feel so proud of yourself that you'll just want to share your result. If you share it on Instagram, then don't forget to tag Tag me in the image, not just in the description, so I will be able to find your work and maybe we'll see it in the next video, just like these amazing results from my friends at Patreon. At Patreon, you will find these other isometric drawing tutorials, plus more than a hundred other Procreate tutorials, so they will keep you busy for a long, long time. But now let's get busy with this tutorial. The canvas we're working on is 2300 pixels by 3000 pixels and I have the color profile set to sRGB. I've created a color palette for you which you can find linked in the description. And if you are ready, let's get started. The first thing we are going to do is create a little sketch for ourselves. Some guidelines to create our isometric drawing, which isn't just any isometric drawing, it also has this optical illusion. Now create that sketch for ourselves. First, we need to make an isometric grid. And to do that, you need to go to the wrench, then to canvas, and then turn on drawing guide and then go to edit drawing guide. And then here at the bottom, you can select isometric and let's also turn up the opacity of our lines a little bit so we are able to see them. I will turn it up to 60%. You can also turn up the thickness, but I will keep it at 60%. And of course you don't need these settings. I am using these settings so you are able to see my grid in the video, but you can definitely make it lighter as long as you are able to see all those triangles. Next, we are going to change the grid size. Right now it's set to 108 pixels, but we are going to tap this and we'll set it to 145 pixels and then tap done here. Then turn on assisted drawing over here. So our lines will only follow the isometric grid and then tap done over here. And now we are ready to start sketching. I'm going to use my chalk pencil brush for that. It's part of the treasure chest brush pack, which you can get for totally free through freefromflow.com, or you can use any other sketching brush that you like. So I have the chalk pencil brush. I'll set the color just to a dark gray or black. Doesn't really matter. You can use any color you like. And the opacity of the brush is at 100% and the size is at 10%. Now let's make sure that you see the edges of your canvas because we are going to do some counting. First we'll go over here. So that's what well, you see like three little triangles, big triangles. So we start over here and then we'll go down and we'll go one, two, three, four, five five steps down and then we'll make a line following the isometric grid and we are going to create another line we'll go one block to the side and we'll go to this intersection and make another line like this we'll do the same thing on the other side so a line like this and then we'll connect these here at the top then we'll go down over here start here and then go one two three Three. So here's the part where we are going to create a line and we will go five steps in this direction. So one, two, three, four, five. And then over here, we'll go down again. Then we'll connect this corner all the way to this center line. And we'll start over here. So that's like one, big diamond shape over here. Then we have this intersection and we'll make a line to the left side here. Then we'll get this one. We'll connect that to the center line and then we'll go down one step and make a line like this. Then over here, we need another line from this corner here, this intersection. And then from here, we'll go to the right line over here. And then we'll go from this area, this intersection over here. 
downward. Then we can make a short line over here and a short line over here. Now we can grab our eraser so you can see that optical illusion. You can just tap and hold the eraser to make it switch to your sketching pencil, which is the chalk pencil in this case. And you can erase this line over here. And as you can see, the eraser is also following the isometric grid. Erase this part, then this part over here, this part, and this part. And now we are finished with that optical illusion area. Now we are going to add an extra part here to the top. Let's grab our pencil again, our chalk pencil, and let's just zoom in a little bit. We are going to extend these lines a little bit outward and this one as well. Then we'll make a gentle line going upward here. Just use a little pressure so you have a vague line. Then we'll go upward a little bit here and we'll do the same on this side. Equal height and then we'll make a line to that center line and also from this area. And we'll do the same over here. We'll go from this corner to the center line here. And we'll connect these areas. So now we have a little plateau on top of our tower. Next, we are going to create a little extra dome on top here. First, we'll make a new layer. So go to the layer menu, then tap the plus. And over here, we'll grab our brush, our chalk pencil. And then let's draw a circle. Just draw a circle, hold your pen in place, and tap one finger on the screen for a perfectly round circle. And then go to the Move and Transform tool, the little arrow, and set it to Distort. Then move it around, and make sure that you put these corners, these blue dots, in the corners of that plateau. So it's following the isometric grid. Now it is a little bit big, so let's make it smaller. We'll set it to uniform here at the bottom and then just drag one of these corners and pull it down so it's in the center. And something like this, that's fine. Then tap the arrow again and now we are going to add a little point to this dome. I want the tip of the dome to be here and we'll make a rounded shape going upward to that point and over here as well. So a little rounded shape, a little like a flat S to that point. And of course you can use the eraser to erase it's the center part. You won't be able to see that. So now we have a nice dome shape. And now we have our entire sketch, our entire guide, and we are ready to add the colors to this piece. Let's first go to the layer menu and then we'll tap the plus for a new layer. And actually we can merge these two layers. Let's pinch them together. And then we'll drag this new layer underneath that line layer. And let's add a little background color here. So we won't have to work on a white canvas anymore. Let's grab a color and let's use this first color over here in the second row and drag it onto our screen. Then we'll make a new layer on top of this one. So tap the plus. Here we are going to start creating the shapes for our tower. And we are going to use the sketch as a guide, but also the isometric grid. I don't want the sketch to be super visible. So let's lower the opacity of it. Let's tap the end here and then slide to the left. And now let's set it to 30%. I also want to be able to see the grid really well, so let's adjust it a little bit. Let's go to the wrench, then to edit drawing guide over here, and let's change the color. I want it to be a bright blue, like this. And maybe we can turn up the opacity even a bit more. Let's go for 80%. And we are going to work with purple. So this blue, it has a nice contrast with that purple. So I'm confident that we will be able to see the grid and that'll, that'll it'll be of help for us. Let's tap done. And now on this new layer, this layer three, we are going to start creating the shapes 
for our tower. Now for the color, we are going to use this one over here, the second color in the first row. I just accidentally tapped the third one. We're going to use the second one, second one in the first row. And we are going to use the selection tool. You need to go to the S shape ribbon, set it to a rectangle and turn on color fill. For me, it's already turned on. You know that it's turned on if it's blue. And now let's zoom out even more by pinching. And now we are going to make a long rectangular shape from here all the way to the bottom. And as you can see, as soon as you let go, your selection will get filled with the color you have selected. Next, we are going to tap the arrow and you'll need to tap it twice to get in the menu for the move and transform. And we are going to set it to distort. Also make sure that while you're working with the move and transform in this case that you have your interpolation set to by cubic or by linear because that will give the most crisp results. Now let's zoom in a little bit. We need to make sure that we are following the grid and we want this area to follow the grid as well, of course. So we can use these handles to make it follow that nice blue grid. Try to be as precise as possible. Check if you're following the grid here as well. I can see that we are a little bit to the left. So let's find that handle over here. And use that handle to move it a little bit to the left. And over here we are fine, I believe. And then once you have this, you can just tap the arrow to get out of the menu. Now we are going to duplicate this layer. We can do it by going to the layer menu, slide to the left on the layer and then tap duplicate. And then we are going to fill this one with the third color in the first row. You can just grab the color and then drag it onto the shape. And I will go to the move and transform again, the arrow. And here at the bottom, we will use flip horizontal. And then make sure that you have snapping turned on here. So you can easily move this to the right. And you'll see those blue lines to know that you are, well, doing the right thing. We do have a little gap, so we need to move it a bit more to the left. Now, if you want to make very tiny adjustments, if you just want to like push it to the left like one pixel, then you can just tap on the left side of your selection and it'll nudge a little bit to the left. Now let's tap the arrow to check how it looks. I do see that we are a little bit too far to the left actually. So let's just change that. Let's go to the move and transform tool again and nudge it to the right. but I do see a little gap over here. So what we could do is we can just use this handle and just make it a little bit bigger. I think we are doing great here. Let's make it even bigger. Then we can tap the arrow again to get out of the menu. And then let's make sure that we place this one underneath the other one so it doesn't cover too much of that corner. So if we turn off the sketch, you can see that we have a nice crisp area there. Then let's turn the sketch back on so we can move on with the other shapes. We're going to create this top part here. Let's make a new layer on top of these two. Let's tap the plus. And for the color, we are going to use the fourth one in the first row. Then let's go to the selection tool again, and we are going to make a rectangular shape again, just like this. Then we need to go to the move and transform tool again, the arrow. And then we are going to make it follow our sketch. So just use these handles and make sure that it follows the isometric grid nicely. Then we'll go to this area. And just try to be as precise as possible. I think we're doing, we're doing fine here. 
I think it looks good. Let's tap the arrow again. And now we can duplicate this layer. So we can go to the layer menu, drag to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the move and transform tool and use flip vertical this time. Now we can move this one to this area. Again, trying to make sure that it's placed well. Let's tap the arrow to check. And see we have, let's, let's turn off that sketch layer. We have a tiny little gap there. So we just need to nudge it a bit. Let's tap the arrow and then move it down one little tap then tap the arrow again. And now it looks perfect. All right, now on to the next. Let's turn on the sketch layer again. Let's merge these two layers. They can be merged. Let's pinch them together. Let's tap the plus for a new layer to create this area over here. For the color, we are going to use this third color in the first row. And then we'll go back to the selection tool. Then let's make a rectangular selection here like this then we'll go to the move and transform tool again and we are going to make sure that it follows the grid by using our handles check out the corners i think they are pretty well placed then over here looking good then tap the arrow and then we need this part and that's easy let's tap the plus for a new layer let's go to the selection tool and here we just need a rectangular selection now do go to the move and transform tool just to make sure that you are following the grid and that you're not too far over there. I think we have crossed the line a bit. We need to go to the left. Let's tap the arrow to check if we don't have a little gap here. We do, just a tiny one. So let's go to the move and transform tool and tap one thingy, one tappy to the right. And then tap the arrow again, check it out. Let's turn off the sketch. I think it looks good. Now for this area, let's make a layer. Well, first let's just merge these two. Now let's make a layer underneath this one. So let's tap layer three here and tap the plus. And then for the color, we are going to grab that second color in the first row again. Then go to the selection tool, make a rectangular selection tap the arrow tap it again you need to tap it twice here and then make it follow the grid here now since it's below this layer over here you don't need to be super careful at the top but we do want it to follow the grid here at the bottom i think this looks good let's tap the arrow and then all we need is this area so let's tap the plus for a new layer, tap the selection tool, and make a rectangular selection. And then let's go to the move and transform tool again, and make sure that we follow that grid line, and then tap the arrow again. Now we can merge these layers as well. Actually, we can just merge them all, just not the background layer, just these. And now let's work on that plateau here. Let's make a new layer by tapping the plus. Now let's go there. Now for the color, we are going to use this one over here, the fourth color in the first row. Let's go back to the selection tool and make a triangle like this. Then we'll go to the move and transform tool again by tapping it twice. And then let's make this follow this sketch that we have and make sure that these two little circles are right on that vertical line of our grid 
So something like this should be fine. Then make a new layer, go to the layer menu and then tab layer three and then tab the plus for a new layer. Then first we'll grab the second color in the first row. We'll make, well, we'll use the selection tool again, make a rectangular selection, go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow, move it down and then make it follow the grid. Let's make sure that it nicely touches that corner. Let's tap the arrow to check it. You can see a little tiny gap here, I think. So let's go to the move and transform tool. Make it just a tiny bit bigger. And then let's make a new layer for the other side. Let's tap the plus for a new layer. Then for the color, we are going to use the third color in the first row. And then we'll go to the selection tool for another rectangle. Then go to the move and transform tool, tap it twice, and then make this follow the grid as well. I think this should look fine. Let's tap the arrow. Still have a little gap. Let's go back, make it a little bit bigger. Then tap the arrow again. Yeah, this is fine. Now for that little dome. To create this dome, we need a new layer again. First, let me just merge these layers for the tower. Then tap the plus for a new layer. So now you should have the background layer, the layer with the tower, a blank layer, and the layer with the sketch. And we are going to work on this layer. But first we are going to change our drawing guide. We'll go to the wrench, then to edit drawing guide. And then we are going to set it to symmetry over here. So you want our dome here, we want it to be symmetrical. And to do that, we need to move this line. You can use this blue little circle to move your symmetry line. Let's zoom in. You want that line to be on the center line of your dome, like this. Then tap done. And now let's grab a different color. We're going to use this color over here. It's the sixth color in the first row. And then for our brush, let's use the monoline brush under calligraphy. Now the opacity of this brush is at 100% and I have set the size to 1%, the smallest size. And now we are going to follow our sketch line and whatever we draw on the left side will also show up on the right side and vice versa. Now let's make a rounded shape all the way to the tip. And you can see that, well, the tip, it's a bit like rounded. We can fix that. Let's tap and hold the eraser to make it switch to the monoline brush. And then with the monoline brush, just erase a little part there at the top to make it nice and pointy. You can also fix any mistakes that are at the bottom if you need it to be more straight. And then just drag in the color to fill your dome. Now we need one more thing. We need two little doorways. To create those, we are going to use the isometric grid again. So let's go to the wrench, then to edit drawing guide, and then set it to isometric again. And then tap done. First, we need a different color. We are going to use the first color in the first row. And we'll still use the monoline brush. First, we are going to create a circle, but we also need a new layer. So let's go to the layer menu and tap the plus for a new layer. And then we are going to draw a circle. Then hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen to create a perfectly round circle, and then drag in the color to fill it. Then we'll make a new layer on top of this one, so tap the plus. Then we'll go to the selection tool again, the S shape ribbon. We still have it set to rectangle with color fill turned on. And now we are going to make a rectangular shape like this. But we want it to well, nicely align with that circle. So let's go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow. 
and then set it to freeform over here and then drag these handles until you see that vertical blue line. We also want this to be nicely centered in that circle. Let's go for something like this and then tap the arrow to check it. Now sometimes it's not perfect. You get a little wobble here. You might need to go back to the move and transform tool and just do it one more time and then tap the arrow again. Now it's looking better. It's just these tiny things. Now let's merge these two layers and let's also merge the tower with the dome. Let's pinch them together. Then back to layer five. And now we are going to move and transform it in such a way that it'll follow the isometric grid. So let's go to the move and transform tool, the arrow, set it to distort. And then we are going to place it over here and we want it to follow the grid. So use this handle over here to make it follow the grid. Now it's way too big right now. So we can just use uniform over here and make it smaller. I also want it to be like narrower. So let's go to free form, use that handle and make it thinner, like narrower. And then place it over here. You want to make sure that it's nicely attached to, to this part. So we can do that by tapping the arrow again. And let's also turn off the sketch. Let's go to the layer menu, turn off the sketch. And I can see that it's nicely aligned with that, with that line. So that's perfect. And we can actually keep the sketch turned off. Now I also want a little edge of light on this entrance. So let's duplicate this layer. We'll slide to the left, tap duplicate. Then we'll go to the bottom one and we will change the color for that one. We'll use this color over here, the fifth color in the first row, drag it onto the shape. And you can't see it right now, but when you go to the layer menu, you'll see that that layer is lighter. Then we'll go to this one, we'll tap it, and we will set it to clipping mask. Then we'll go to the move and transform tool, and we are going to nudge it a little bit to the left by tapping about three times, and tap the arrow again, and now you can see a tiny light edge. I also want some light on the ground here. Let's go to this layer, layer five. Let's turn on alpha lock. So we will only be able to paint on that shape over here. And for our brush, we will go to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush. We'll stick with the same color. The opacity of this brush is at 60% and the size is at 5%. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's add a little bit of light here. Then zoom out again. I think that's perfect. And you know what? We can actually turn off the isometric grip by now. Let's go to the wrench and then turn off the drawing guide. And then let's duplicate these two layers because I also want a doorway over here. And let's select both of these layers by sliding to the right. And then you can just drag them onto your canvas to make duplicates. Now these aren't connected to each other. We need to tap this layer and then use clipping mask again. Then let's select them both. Then go to the move and transform tool and drag this one downward. And check that blue line so you'll know that it's right beneath the other one. And you can nudge it a little bit and tap the arrow, check if it's in the right place. I think it's perfect. And I think we can continue with the final details. Let's Put this sketch layer on top of the others again. Let's make sure that clipping mask isn't turned on there. And let's just merge all of these layers for the tower. Just don't merge it with the background. Everything around the tower should be gray on this little icon. Now let's go to our background layer, layer three. Let's zoom out a little bit again. And then let's use the soft brush to create a gradient for our background. First, we'll grab the second color in the second row. And let's make the brush bigger. Let's set it to 25%. And then let's go over that center area, make some rounded motions. 
I want the top area to stay light. I just want this color in the center area. So a bit like this. Then we'll move on to the third color in the second row. And we'll add that to the bottom area. Again, I'm making rounded motions. Make multiple strokes. So you're getting a nice soft gradient. If you want it to be even softer, you can go to the magic wand here, then to Gaussian blur and slide your finger or your pen to the right to make the gradient even softer. Let's go for 8% and then tap the magic wand again. Next, I want to add the sun. Let's do that on a new layer. We'll tap the plus. And for our brush, we'll go to the model and brush again under calligraphy. And then for the color, we'll grab this one over here, fourth color in the second row. And let's just draw a big circle. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen for a perfectly round circle. Then you can go to edit shape here at the top to move it around if you like. I'm going to place it in the center over here and then drag in the color to fill the shape. Then go to the layer, tap it, turn on alpha lock so you won't be able to paint outside of the shape. Then go back to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush and switch to this color over here, fifth color in the second row. And then let's add some of this color to that lower area. Create a nice gradient on this sun. Making rounded motions like this. Next, we'll make a new layer on top of our tower layer. So tap layer three and tap the plus. And then for our color, we'll grab this one over here, the seventh color in the second row. And we are going to add some mist here at the bottom. So that it seems that this tower is really high and you can't even see the bottom. So make multiple strokes until you can't see the bottom of the tower anymore. Next, let's add some clouds. We'll do that on a layer on top of our sun layer, layer four, let's tap the plus. And then for our brush, I would like to go and use my basic flow brush. You can find it in a treasure chest brush pack. It's over here. Remember, you can get this brush pack for free by going to free from flow. And then for the color, let's grab the sixth color in the second row. I have the opacity set to 100% and the size is set to 30%. And let's make some wispy, misty clouds by making these horizontal strokes. over here and a few a little bit lower so just horizontal strokes then you can go ahead and use the smudge tool that's the little finger up here and set it to the standard blender which is also part of the treasure chest brush pack the opacity for this brush is set to 50% and the size is at 15%. And I can use this to smear the clouds a little bit, but again, make horizontal strokes. This will make the clouds look a little bit softer. You can push and pull the paint. until you're happy and then you can lower the opacity of this layer by tapping the N and let's set it to 65%. Then let's go back to the layer with the tower and I realize I have made a mistake by merging these layers. I'm not sure how I could have done that but we should have let the dome be on a separate layer. But mistakes like this happen when creating digital art and there's always a way to fix it. So let's just do that. Let's use our selection tool in this case. Let's go to the S shape ribbon and turn off color fill. 
and then go to automatic. I'm sure we can automatically select this dome. Let's tap it. Now this is way too much. We need to select less. So we need to drag the threshold by sliding to the left. Then we need to tap with two fingers to undo the selection. And let's tap it again. And now you can see only our dome is green. So remember, tap and hold and then slide to the right or left to change the threshold until only the dome is green. So now we have a selection. Let's go to the layer menu, then tap the plus for a new layer. Then we'll go to the brushes and let's use the soft brush under airbrushing. And for the color, we are going to use this one over here the last color in the first row. Now let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's set it to 5% or what is it? 5%. Yeah. And the opacity is at 60% and let's go along the edge here to add a little bit of shadow shape that dome just along this area. Then let's tap the S ship ribbon, check it out. Well, it would have been better if we had the dome on a separate layer, but things like this happen. And this is just a way to fix an issue like that. Now, finally, let's add a little flag. We're going to do that on a separate layer. Don't accidentally merge them. Let's tap the plus and then let's grab the monoline brush again under calligraphy. We'll use the same color, the seven color in the first row. And the size of the brush is still at 1% and the opacity at 100. And then just make a swooping line like this, like, but like an S shape. Then we are going to duplicate this layer. So we'll go to the layer, slide to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the move and transform tool, set it to distort, and then use this handle and drag it down. Then tap the arrow again and then connect these two with a line and then go to the layers, pinch them together, just these two layers with the, with those shapes for our flag and then drag in the color to fill it. Now you might need to fill some areas by hand. And if you want this to be more crisp, then you can use the eraser. It's still set to monoline. And you can go along that area and make it even more pointy. Now let's move this flag. Let's go to the move and transform tool, place it over here, maybe a little bit lower. But then let's make a layer underneath our tower layer. So tap layer six here, then tap the plus, and then grab a brush, the model line brush, and make a line like this going up so that our flag connects to our dome. And that's it. You have created an isometric illustration inspired by Monument Valley. And we even fixed a little mistake together. I hope you have enjoyed following this tutorial. If you did, why not check out this one as well? I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.